All right, it is Wednesday the 11th, and we're going to make videos today and probably every day for a while, since I have several people not here, and we might have several people not here for the foreseeable future. We want to get into the habit of making sure those guys don't get left behind. Today I'm going to open up some of our classwork stuff and do a little review, a little example. If you look, the um, assignments were unit three on the basic Python stuff, input, do something with it, print it out, and then the next one was conditionals, where you do a branch. If something is true, you go this way. If it's not, you go this way. Oh, that's the wrong thing. And so I thought I'd bring some of those up, maybe answer a question, show an example, talk about the concepts, if we may. So this one, basic Python and console interaction. Does one of you guys have one you want to open up and look at? If not, I'll just click on one in the middle. How about mathematical operators, rectangle? Sometimes when I do this preview on the teacher version, it fills it in. Sometimes it doesn't. If it does, we'll delete it. Okay. Delete. Delete. Don't even look. We want to do it on our own. Okay. What is all this? Assignment. It says make variables to represent the length and width of a rectangle. It's called length and width. You should set them. Okay. So this is like skipping the input stuff. We're not going to ask for user input, although we could in these initial lines. And then compute them with area and perimeter only using the variables. So there's no like hard coded values in, in these lines. Okay. And then print to show them. So the output is going to show these two these two guys. Okay, so let's say length is 10 and width is five and this is great because later we could replace these lines with something cooler we could have it get input from a user we could have it get you know stuff from a database or whatever and then we're going to say area equals length times width and so that is locked in forever no matter what happens to these we might change these but area is no is still length times width no matter what and then perimeter is still uh, 2 times, I cannot type, 2 times, you know, like 1 plus 1 plus the other plus the other. And this also doesn't change. No matter what happens to these, maybe we get different values for these, this part is solid. And then it wants us to print these. So uh, it usually lets us get away with not doing the str conversion. You know, we could do something like that, especially if we were combining it. If it was like the area is, in quotes, plus area, then we'd want to convert it to a string to make sure that it can put them together. But on its own, it usually knows what we mean. So I'm going to hit run and make sure it doesn't just blow up. And it does work. And I'm going to hit test cases because when I am uh, like answering questions, if somebody says, hey, can you look at this and figure out what's wrong, I tell them to go to the test cases. And you hit check code, and then it goes through all the different parts. And if it has one of them telling you, hey, it's red, you don't have it, then it would pop up and you would know that it's that specific thing rather than trying to do the whole problem in your head all at once. Okay. So any questions about that one? You want to go on to the unit four and look at one of those because that's the cool stuff. IMO. Let's look at unit four. And let's say, I don't know, how about one of these? How about this one? Ooh, the next one says challenge. Maybe we can do that too. So the addition 
in unit four, the stuff that they're adding is um, delete it, delete it, don't look, don't look. I'm making it on our own. Is the logic is saying like, oh, if something, then we go this way. If not, we go this way, and branch us off into new directions. So let's say we were going to do that. Um, write a program that reports whether or not someone else is out. I, I actually haven't looked at this, by the way. I deleted those lines and I'm trying to keep it uh, from scratch in my mind. Ask the user for their age and stored in a variable. Okay. Age equals um, input. What is your age? And then probably, if we're going to do anything with it, we probably want to wrap it in an int, okay? Because if we took their age, it would just be like the characters that they put in. So if they type 78, it would store it as like the 7 and the 8 rather than the value that we call 78. But, you know, numbers, you can describe numbers in lots of other ways. We could do this in binary, for example. If you were going to do 78 in binary, I think you would do a 64, not a 32, not a 16, an 8, a 4, a 2, not a 1. Okay, that was dumb. Usually you go right to left, but that works. That's binary. What if we were going to do this in Roman numerals? We could say uh, you need a 50 and then a couple 30s, and then 5, and then a couple 1s. Now this is 78, and this is also 78, but it's a different string, okay? So if we put age equals this, it would in accept whatever string they put, but we don't really care about that. We don't care about, like, the character 7 and the character 8. We care about the value in math land, which only happens if we put that int around it, or float if we were going to do floaty stuff. So ask the user if they are a citizen. Okay. Citizen equals, um, we could make this a Boolean, a yes or no, true or false, but um, we might want to have them type in like y or in or some of that stuff. Let's see what happens. Um, are you a citizen of the u.s. dot question mark and I'm going to say yes slash no and they'll type wire in unless they ask us for something else later in the directions and then we'll change it. Three, ask the user how long they've been arrested. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Duration, does that sound like a reasonable name? Duration equals um, how long have you been a resident of the u.s. Well, and that one is probably going to be an int because we're going to do something with it. We're going to say, oh, is it greater than a million or less than whatever? So we probably need it to be in math land and not in character land. Use an if else with the proper comparison to print. You are eligible to run if they have the following credentials, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So Okay, this is saying we're going to ask them for specifically capital Y yes or specifically capital N now. So I'm going to change what I put up here. And if we were really good, if we were making this later when we have more skills, we would add a little check where it would be like if they put something else, then it would loop back and say, oh, can you try again? But right now we're going to um, keep it. Keep it kind of loose. Okay. So, if they have the right age and the right citizenship and the right duration, then we give them the yes, you're good. And if one of those is off, we give them the no. Okay. So, let's try. I really don't like squishing everything into one line. Like, I could do if this and this and this. In most situations, I would separate it or make some variable, but let's see what happens if we can squish it into one line. If age is greater than or equal to 35, right, 
and citizen equals yes with a capital and duration is greater than or equal to 14 then print you are eligible if not print sorry buddy okay before I do their check I'm gonna run to see if it just makes sense in my view what is your age 34 free citizen yes how long 56 sorry okay let's do one where the answer is going to be yes 59 yes how long uh 19 hey okay now let's do their test cases section because it might not like it might say oh i didn't use the word president in the final thing or whatever Oh, yeah, okay. So it wants us to say, like, the, I'm going to copy this little guy. Boop. Boop. And now, since that line is super long, I'm going to separate it just because it looks ugly to have one line sticking out. So now let's try. What? Oh. You are eligible. And then the other one says you are not. There we go. Okay, it likes it. So we were able to squish all this into one line because they were pretty short. Usually if you're like testing one thing and another thing and another, you'd want to separate it out. So I could make a variable that says like eligible and then I could have it test this stuff and then I would say if eligible equals true, then blah, 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 blah. But since it was relatively short we were able to do that any uh, questions about that one they're not even looking at me so I'm gonna stop this here because this video is 12 minutes and that's a pretty good size I don't want to make them super long but that was an example of something from unit 3 something from unit 4 and uh, today I might grade some of those today I might answer questions over some of those I'm not gonna assign the next one although if you want to work ahead, we are doing Unit 5 next, um, so you can. But that's basically it. Today we're going to um, walk around, answer questions, write stuff on the board, and help everybody get going, because some people have one concept but not another. Like some people in my last period were really flummoxed about some of the math stuff of like the symbols they use, like, oh, um, for an exponent, you do star star instead of what you might expect, a little carrot or something. Other people were messing up quotation marks a lot because they hadn't got the idea of string versus value. But that's okay. We're getting there. Um, just take your time and we'll make some progress. Thanks.